Innovation Rockstars. Innovation Rockstars. In this episode, we are pleased to welcome Roni Michael, Global Head of Innovation at KPMG International. Hi, and welcome back to Innovation Rockstars. My name is Chris Mühlroth, and in this episode, I am thrilled to welcome Roni Michael in her role as Global Head of Innovation. And I'm very happy to have you on the show. Roni, really, thanks much for joining. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really thrilled to be here. <laughs> Same here. All right. And as always, uh, we start straight away with a short 60 seconds introduction sprint. Now, you know, this is all about you, your career and your current role. So for the next 60 seconds, the virtual stage is all yours. Let's go. Wonderful. Well, I am uh, 46, Israeli, raised and born, um, happily, very happily married, mother of two sons. Um, I love life. I love laughing and I love people. And I try to encompass that in almost everything that I've um, done. Um, I've had the great pleasure to, to to be able to do that in the past 20 years in my role, different roles at KPMG. I've uh, set up to IT advisory here in uh, KPMG Israel and technology consulting group, AI, data, cyber. And in the past one and a half years, I've led innovation globally for the firm, for KPMG, uh, which has been really exciting being able to look at what technology, society, and other things are um, doing to affect businesses, the market, different sectors, and just uh, in general, how we live. Um, I don't know if I've hit the 60 seconds. I hope that's... Uh, 58, that's, uh, 59, 60, perfectly okay. on time. <laughs> and and that, that's a wonderful introduction. And maybe, maybe to get to know you just a little bit better, um, I do have three sentence starters for you. Okay. So I'll give the sentence starters, and I would like you to complete uh, those sentences. Um, and so let's see what happens. Uh, number one right. goes like this. Uh, my personal driver to work in corporate innovation is... Is to change for better through people, technology, and working with uh, and inspiring um, individuals and organizations. Yeah. Yeah, and it's an exciting space to be in. I, I bet it that is. specifically with the teams you have. All right, awesome. Yeah. So number two, um, so a second sentence starter. For me, uh, the term innovation means? Means changing the prism and the way you look at, you know, fill in the dots. Business, yeah. life, a specific technology and so on. Yeah, it's all encompassing. Interesting. All right. Yeah. And number three, I'm really interested to hear that. Um, the book I have given most as a Ooh. gift is? Um, it's a book uh, co-written by the Dalai Lama and Daniel Goldman. I think it's called Negative Feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and I really highly recommend it. All right, everybody get that book. All right, great. Thank you for thank you for that. Now let's let's dive into um, KPMG and its innovation efforts. Um, cool. Because I think that's really an, an, an impressive story. Uh, so in the recent years, you know, we, we all have experienced uh, you know a period of unprecedented change. Right. It led to a new wave of innovations uh, that and then came up you know new solutions, value propositions, business models, even technologies and the like. So in that light, KPMG is accelerating its efforts um, in innovation really on a global scale. Um, my question would be, why now? I mean, you know, what, what led to KPMG's decision to accelerate their efforts in innovation? Well, first of all, I would say KPMG has been um, doing so much around innovation um, for as long as I've been there and I've, I've been at KPMG for 20 years. I think one really clear decision is to make it more evident, um, to tell a more cohesive story around innovation that's not just embedded in everything that we do, actually talk about innovation by itself. Um, it's part of our culture. It's the way we think and act and really kind of sometimes just setting it apart and saying, see, we did that and that's innovative, it's innovation. And we do that more and more because it actually matters to our people. It matters to the organizations we work with, to our ecosystems, to the market. Um, so one really clear decision is to tell that story 
in a clearer, more vocal way. And um, we try to, to do that through just framing so much of what we've already done, like co-creation with our ecosystems, um, like thinking about what the future is going to look like and saying, see, that's, that's how we look at, at the future at innovation. Um, and I think telling the story is a very, very significant part of um, getting a message through. Um, yeah. The other thing, and, and you said it yourself, right? The world's changing. It's just a pace of things. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of this has been reactive from so many parts of the market. KPMG is an organization that helps um, um, clients around the world yeah. and, 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 um, and, and organizations, different types of organizations, governments, corporates, um, really think about what are the next steps that they need to do? We are often much more proactive and think about how, what it feels like being proactive in such a hectic market. It just requires straining that muscle more and more and more. So I think more than anything else, um, if we want to be um, truly ahead of the market, if we want to look into the future, we have to do more of what we've done, but so much faster and and then in, in a more intense way. So I think that's those are really two decisions that were clearly are clearly evident in the way that we act. Yeah, yeah, that's super interesting. And uh, concerning, you know, telling the stories and also communicating them, what, what are some of the formats um, that you have to communicate stories, but also communicate success stories and learnings and innovation, digital formats, physical formats? How do you communicate? Well, uh, uh, some of the things that we've done is um, that we've actually created um, some assets that we can share with our own people and with the market around the innovation activities that we do. If we run a global hackathon um, or a challenge, if we um, d deep dive into the future of a specific industry and have conversation with, with leaders around that specific sector or industry, then uh, we make it a point to actually wrap that up and, and serve it very nicely to our own people, to our clients, to the market, to our ecosystems, so that it can have a better understanding of what it is that we do. And like you asked me before, what it means for us to innovate. And I learned you also have a podcast, if I'm informed correctly. That's true. I do have a podcast of my own. It's called yeah. uh, Back from 2040. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I'm really, really interested about is the future. Um, I'm interested about it, especially because I do believe that the future is something that we can actively shape, um, not just as society, but also as individuals and as organizations, as corporates. And, uh, and so I really like looking at the future, talking about it, talking about what we want it to be, even through discussing what we want it to be, we're driving change. So in this podcast, I invite my guests to talk about their journey into 2040. They go to 2040, they come back and they tell me what it was like. And they have to imagine 2040 the way that they wanted to evolve and to um, unravel. It's very interesting. It's one of the things I really like to do. And I guess it's available on all the major podcast formats. So, you know, if you're interested, Indeed. you know, guys, uh, check it out. Um, and we'll also make sure to link it in the in the show notes of uh, this episode. Now, concerning oh, your clients, you, you already talked about, um, you know, your clients and how you are helping them. Um, but going forward, what, what role do you foresee in the coming years uh, for KPMG in helping your clients innovate? Well, you know how you asked me um, what innovation is? And I told you it's it's that point of view. It's a it's it's the way that prism, the way that you look at it, and the angle that you catch. Um, I think really it's opening that angle as wide as possible. Um, I think innovation it doesn't only mean different things to different people and organizations. It it actually is is different things. Yeah. And for organizations to innovate, they actually uh, one of the things that they need to do is just kind of step out of their own shell. And really look at, at the at things from, you know, not just an outside in, but also different types of angles. Now, of course, another way I think is really in order to innovate, you you have to be a little bit off guard. So you have to take mm -hmm. a little bit of that, the, the, the guards that, that, that you have on a day to day basis. I think our ability to create that intimate discussion 
through understanding our um, yeah. client's business, understanding the market, understanding the sector through deep expertise, but also through deep personal relationship. I think that's definitely something that can drive uh, innovation. And obviously, lastly, is the ability to really bring in that deep understanding from different places, if it's, you know, from technology, quantum, AI, and and, and cloud, um, if it's for sector expertise, if it's around social changes, and just kind of pull those together and, and create an uh, all-encompassing discussion around the different angles of an initiative or a challenge, that that really brings value. It, it certainly does. And, and you know, I think that there lies a, both an opportunity, but also a challenge in that because, you know, all, all the different um, change factors you just mentioned that includes economic, societal, but also technological factors, um, um, you know, it, the, the number of change factors you have to observe over time is just increasing and it's getting faster and faster. So this opens up new opportunities, sure, for growth, um, but also you need to make sure, um, you know, um, with that business areas and those manifold opportunities, you also, you know, maintain a balanced innovation portfolio, right? So not only shoot for, you know, the moonshots for the crazy 10x, 100x, um, um, you know, opportunities, but also to have something in the core business or and also in the adjacent business. So, um you know, how, how does KPMG look at that? I mean, how, how could you possibly try to build and also maintain a balanced innovation portfolio given all these things that are happening right now? Yeah, that's, uh, thank you so much for asking me that question because um, maybe to balance my my previous answer, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, it's not about um, that moonshot and it's not about dispersing yeah. your efforts around innovation to touch this, that, and the other. It really does have to start with the core business and and you're kind of breaking the barriers to think of what this business could be, what is the yeah. potential. Um, so first of all, looking at the big picture and understanding what could we be, and then focusing on the, the organization's strategy, um, what it aspires to be, and really diving into specific and focused initiatives. When I say, you know, society, technology, um, um, the environment and, and so many other factors, I actually say that when we focus at a specific challenge or place that we want to be, when we target ourselves to a point of where we want to be, we have to take those in mind, but we actually have to drive focused initiatives that have looked at that. I think driving a portfolio of innovation cannot be a thing of its own. It really goes to the, to, uh, to a firm, an organization, um, a company's strategy and what they want to be. And through that strategy, even thinking about today, not even about tomorrow or the day after that requires innovation because you want to make today better. Um, so you want to really look at what you, how could you become better today? What kind of an organization, an entity would you like to be tomorrow? When I say tomorrow, I mean in three or five years. Yeah. And what kind of an organization, what is the meaning and the purpose of what you want to be in 10 years from now? And that's part of why I, I love looking at the future, because you can actually go back and forth and, and understand how to adjust yourself today and tomorrow to become what you want to be the day after that. Yeah, it's taking also those very concrete steps also in the core um, business. Sure. Absolutely agreed. Yes. So is there any way how you actually measure innovation success? I mean, it's it's an ongoing debate, right, about how to make sure you measure output and outcome from innovation um, and then going forward also success of innovation. Do, do you have any, any, any I don't know, framework, any, any procedure how to measure success of innovation? Well... I think um, for us, it's an ongoing discussion um, internally as well as with our, our clients. Um, we do have a methodology of, you know, how to create innovation steps within our, an organization and how to measure. But let me just go back to the core of it. Yeah. And in fact, just by splitting, you know, kind of separating innovation for, from the core activity, you actually do a little bit of harm and injustice to what it is that you do. So I would say... How do you manage and, and, and measure an organization's success um, in their strategy? So you, there, there are clear KPIs to do that. I think it starts with the strategy. And once you set that strategy, ask yourself, 
Have I been innovative? Have I actually stepped out of the boundaries of myself as an organization, as a, a, of, the, of what I want to be? Once you do that and your strategy is set to innovate, you can just measure the success of actually executing on that strategy. So I think, um, I think in many terms, organizations still don't do the first step, which mm -hmm. is actually just look at the way that we've built the process of driving our strategy, our corporate, our, our organization, our um, local or global strategy. Once we look at that and say, have we been innovative enough? And by innovative, really made sure that we have aimed to be the, the best organization that we think we could be, all things given, um, and really kind of strived to break the boundaries of what we think um, you know, the, the, uh, business world and the world in general, um, lie just hand out to us. And I think that once you do that, then you can just go ahead and, and measure your own KPIs. And then after having said that, yes, for sure, there are, we've developed very clear methods of, of innovating. One of them is, is, um, um, co-innovating and co-ideating with our ecosystem. And the way that we measure that is how many times we actually do that together with, clients and uh, third parties and and just different parts of our ecosystem yeah i think this is a very good way how how, how to look at that right because um you know sometimes organizations still confuse or maybe misalign their innovation efforts with the actual innovate uh, the corporate strategy the company's strategy right so they of course you know then create um, uh, many different or use many different instruments of innovation, be it some labs, accelerators, venture builders, you have not, right? So there is there is tons of instruments you can build, and obviously they have their very own purpose, but sometimes they seem to be disconnected to, for example, a growth strategy or growth ambitions. So, you know, questions, for example, how much of the overall organization's growth should be attributed to innovation or by covered by innovation efforts? The, these are things that clearly help to tying this to, for example, then the company strategy, as you say. So start with the strategy and make sure innovation efforts are really embedded in what the overall organization does. Um, and if it's moonshots, okay, well, fine, but then, you know, certainly a small proportion or a big bet, but a small proportion of the growth portfolio might, you know, maybe come sometimes from those moon, from those moonshot projects, but how would you know? So that's a really good answer, right? Tying this to the strategy and make sure it's embedded in the organization yeah. and not some crazy guys running somewhere around, right? And, and I'll maybe add some things short to that. I'll say, um, I do think that there is true value in experimentation yeah. and creating those projects or, um, on the side. Um, I think it really has to, to, to do with the, um, the appetite an organization has to try different things and different, you know, dif be different ways of working, different business models and so on. Um, so every organization really has to identify their own appetite. But one thing that is very clear for us, those um, initiatives and, and experiments um, do sometimes need to be siloed, but they need to be really quickly assessed to see if they yeah. do somehow go back to the organization strategy. So we say fail fast. If you intend to succeed, you'll see it really quickly. If it succeeds, then that's great. Also, never intend to succeed 100% of the time because sure. uh, that's that's a really terrible strategy because you'll only go for safe bets. Um, so really <laughs> try yeah. to you know, um, to envision what, what the level of failure it is that your organization is willing to accept. And then by that, allow yourself to bet, to drive experimentation in other areas and really live by that. I don't know, let's say it's 50-50. We think 50% is going to succeed, 50% is going to fail. Sure. If you see it's failing, fail fast. And then the pain of failure will not be that high. And you'll actually start working on that muscle, which is experimentation, which is something that basically we do every day of our lives, even in the way that we interact. We, we interact in a certain way. We look at how someone responds and we adjust ourselves really quickly. So the adjusting part, that's very important. Yeah. So you have fail fast and learn fast, obviously, right? So adjust. So I love that. Yeah. That, that is great advice. So I would love to talk a bit um, um, about something you mentioned earlier, um, the hackathon. Um, but before we go to the hackathon, um, actually, I let's play a quick game. Um, the game is called okay. Either 
or uh, it, it's a pretty simple sure. game, right? This is how it works. Um, I, I will give you two options, you know, either option A or option B. Uh, you choose one of those options and then maybe, you know, spend one or two sentences each to briefly explain your choice and speed is key, right? Um, okay. So let's see, number Shoot. one. If you had either superpower, which of the following would you rather do? Travel back in time or forward in time and why? Uh, I think you already guessed I'd travel forward for sure. Um, and the reason is because I, I really would believe that I'd see the future and mm. come back and change what I didn't like about it. Okay, okay, I understood. Number two, if you were to write your own memoir one day in the future, would you rather write it, you know, on digitally or handwritten with pen and paper and why? For sure, handwritten. I actually uh -huh. do write a little bit, not my memoirs, but uh, I do write a oh, little cool. bit. Um, I believe that uh, we could have a whole discussion about intuition. I really do believe mm -hmm. in intuitiveness. And for my kids, and definitely for their kids, I think it would be probably very more, much more intuitive to use the keyboard for me. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm a Gen X, uh, it's still so much more intuitive for me to use pen and pencil. And it just is it just lets my thoughts kind of roll immediately to the page. It makes perfect sense. All right. Thank you. And number three. Now, that's an interesting one. Uh, would you rather only live on the beach for a year or only live in a cabin in the woods for a year? And why? Ooh. Why is the hot part? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Okay, well, I live in Israel. I can go to the beach almost mm -hmm. whenever I want, and it's sunny and hot, I think, nine out of nice 12 yeah. months. So I would definitely go into the cabin and into the woods. Um, I might, uh, <laughs> I might uh, be tired of it at a certain point in time, mm -hmm. but definitely a change of scenery. And, um, and I love being around nature, um, trees, and, and, and plants. Yeah, and reconnect. All right, okay, okay, yeah. that's great. Okay, now, okay, okay, now we got that. And let's now talk about the, the hackathon because I'm really interested in, you know, it, it's one of your instruments for um, you know, getting things done, obviously, for innovating, for co-creating um, with, you know, brilliant minds, but also um, with different cultures and, and different regions and different, just different minds with different backgrounds. So I guess it's a very good instrument. And I guess one of, one of KPMG's uh, focus topics um, is the new era of work, which is you know, a very broad topic. So let's talk about this for a while. Um, maybe we can define it first, right? So what, what is the new era of work and, and where are its challenges? Okay, well, um, great. I mean, I love this topic just because... Um, just like saying, you know, innovation, the new, the future of work, the new era of work is just all encompassing. But if we go back to the basics, um, what are the, what have always been the challenges of work? It's what organizations um, or the work, the, the work requesters uh, kind of need and what are the work providers um, looking for? Mm -hmm. And 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 really, when we think about people, what people usually, you know, I don't know, a century ago, um, um, it, it used to be, you know, people needed money. They needed to live. They needed a way to, to make a living, which meant money or food or a place to, to live. And once we're gonna, an, a corporate provided that, an organization provided that, that was okay. And later on, you know, people wanted to 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 get more out of that, maybe more money, but also sometimes more fulfillment, et cetera. I think, so kind of looking at that, um, we really look, when we look at this day and age, um, mm -hmm. it really is about what do people want? What are they asking for? Um, and what do organizations need? What are they asking for? And how do we bridge that gap? So let's start with employees, with the people, uh, because that's really critical. Um, few things that we already know, and it's not, I'm not going to, you know, discover new, anything new to anyone, but it's just kind of looking at the basics. People are really looking much more for meaning and values. They're looking much more for, um, diversity and, and, and doing, you know, more things and different things. Um, they're looking to get something that is suited for them individually, which I think is probably the, the third one is all, all probably the most important thing. Because if we used to say, this is what an employee wants, now we have to subcategorize it. And when we start doing that, we actually start realizing that every individual really wants something else. So it's also about the freedom 
of choice and the ability to pick and choose and to build something that is not molded. So those molds, they can't serve us anymore. So how does how do we create um, you know, work opportunities for people who really want everything, but they want to choose what they want out of the, all, all of these possibilities. At the same time, if we look at organizations, what do organizations want? Um, they'd love to have people staying as much as possible if they're good. That's what organizations have always wanted. But they've started acknowledging that they can't control that. Uh, they'd like people to be, you know, very strong on people skills and technology skills and, and outgoing if possible, but also be able to deep dive. But they also understand that people are different. So not, I think there's, it's rarely that people can do all of this. Um, so really understanding how to tap into those abilities in different ways. Um, and so, you know, to sum it up, <laughs> it's really difficult to sum up, but I, it's important because it's crucial for every organization. It's mm -hmm. critical because the changes there have been the fastest ones we've seen. And they've just kind of almost blown up in our faces. And um, we really need to figure out what our strategy in our, as an organization is. And I'm talking about every organization on this planet in terms of bringing in people, making sure that they're happy and making sure that we get the best out of what they have to offer and what we need as an organization. And to explore what, you know, a future of that could look like, or maybe even the digital future uh, of what could look like, um, you ran an innovation challenge um, and a hackathon, right? Um, so um, I guess there is a good reason, of course, you, you just mentioned that, right? Why you chose uh, the topic of digital future of work as a challenge um, for the hackathon. Uh, maybe, maybe can, can you guide us just, you know, a bit through the hackathon? So how did that go? Um, and also what yeah. are the, the outcomes of that? I'd be really interested to hear. Oh yeah, sure. I'd love to, because it's one of the things that I'm so thrilled about. And you know, when we run a hackathon or a challenge, we don't just start like that. We actually yeah. bring in as many, um, um, as many of our ecosystem yeah. that, that we can. So we brought in, you know, different organizations, uh, that are part of our ecosystems, you know, client and academic, um, a technology company, and, and also brought in leaders from within KPMG to think about what are the biggest challenges. And, and we brought up this question of, you know, of how could we actually look at the digital future of work and what kind of solutions could we create? So we were focusing on solutions. And um, the nice thing about it is, first of all, uh, through the innovation platform that we have, we are able to tap into people in multiple jurisdictions and different places around the globe. So bringing really different mindsets. Um, that was great because we had teams from I don't know, five or seven countries, um, including, you know, Australia and the US and the UK and, and, and so on. Cool. So really, yeah. really um, all across the globe. So that's one thing. And we were able to build these teams so that they would work together from the different organizations that took, uh, um, that participated in, in our um, hackathon. Uh, we had the ideas submitted and we really looked at them and assessed them. But most of all, we wanted to drive into a solution. So we ran, ran two days, days of an actual hackathon with, you know, dive deep dive sessions into kind of how you build solutions kind of um uh, even open innovation and and thinking about ways to help them figure out how to create a solution together and we have to, had a team of of uh, um, um subject matter experts that were there to support them um and we came out with Wow, amazing ideas um and uh the outcome of this is three of these ideas that we've actually invested and some of them we've co-invested together with the different parts of our ecosystem to build a solution that will tackle um, the digital future of work. And, and one of them is like, you know, as far as going into the metaverse and building spaces in, in yeah. a unique way, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell the whole thing. <laughs> sure. One is really tackling a, a digital solution to tackle that gap between what do people offer workplaces and what workplaces need and how to to bridge that gap and another way is really just about um uh working virtually in uh in virtual places and how to make that more uh, engaging in a way 
Yeah, and I think that is a really, you know, an impressive outcome for, of course, it was, you know, the actual time invest was more than just those two days at the hackathon because of the preparation work and, and the like, but really, um, you know, having um, not only ideas, but concrete solutions at hand, where you can say, okay, now this is what we want to tap into, let's, you know, invest a little bit here and there and, and go on and really build a solution for needs we see emerging or, you know, and maybe others don't feel that need yet, but they're so they could be unmet in the um, and we try to meet them with our solutions. So I guess that's that's a, pretty impressive for that short amount of time uh, of time you, you invested in there. That that's really yeah. Cool. We're we're really happy with the outcomes, and we're yeah. actually getting all the teams to go through this um, um, joint workshop to just share lessons because yeah. we become so much smarter when we actually think about what went well, what didn't work well and how we could innovate and co-create um, even better. And you did that physically, right? So you, you met, but also had digital, um, obviously, you know, people from all the, all the other countries exactly. uh, also immersed uh, into that process. Yeah. Indeed. Cool. Okay. All right. So what, what's next for KPMG's innovation efforts? What, what can we expect to see and also hear from you soon? Well, first of all, let me say any kind of challenge that the market is dealing with will be there. So part of what we do around innovation is looking at the market challenges. Um, we will run through some of these um, ideation hackathons and co-creation sessions with clients as, uh, as we continue forward and always trying to tackle the you know, hottest topics and the things that really are the biggest challenges for organizations. So co-creation, co-ideation, um, that is one very significant part for, for, which we're going to uh, continue to do. and. The top content of that will obviously change as we look into different sectors and and uh, and different um, um, areas of the industry. Um, another big thing that we're looking at is obviously the metaverse. Um, I think there's no organization worldwide that hasn't taken a look at that, and obviously um, there are a lot of influences and a lot of impact. Um, on different sectors and in different markets as well. So that's something that we're really looking into. We've built some solutions. We've uh, also created KPMG on the metaverse for different mm. member firms around the globe. And so that's definitely something that we're going to look at. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is through really bringing um, um, the ability of our own people and of our clients to learn more and understand more of how this affects and influences them. Um, and, and we will continue to look at new technologies in the horizon. So not just the technologies of today, but also, you know, of horizon two and three, what's going to come out in the next five and 10 years. Um, so we're looking at, at some interesting stuff as well. AI has, still has so much to offer and is going to affect our lives in so many ways, but, you know, in order to, to, to create more computing ability. We're also looking at quantum computing and experimenting with that and, and really looking at, again, different ways that technology is going to change um, business and life. So there is a lot to explore and a lot, lot to be done in the next uh, few For years. Sure. So great to hear that. Now, if you try to, you know, um, um, summarize um, what we heard today, um, what would you say, what are the, let's say, three key actionable recommendations that you want listeners to take away uh, from this episode with you? Oh, cool. Well, I'd say, first of all, if you experiment, make sure that you experiment based on your appetite for experimentation. Don't go beyond those borders. Um, and when you do, make sure to really get out of your limits and, you know, identify if you're succeeding or failing. If you fail, fail fast. That's the first thing. Um, second, um, innovation is always connected into strategy. Don't look at it as a silo thing. So really think is, uh, about the organization's strategy. Look at that. If your strategy and the way that you want to execute that has innovative pieces embedded in that, then that's great. Then you can go on, but start with that basic thing. Um, and I would say just around the future of work, um, I think the one thing that we need to understand is every individual, um, you know, there's different things that make them happy. And I think that having an organization with happy people, with people that have fun in doing what they do, um, that's really important. So if any organization can just find a way to make life um, at work 
more engaging, more fun, um, more fulfilling than, you know, make sure you do that. Yeah, that that's great and perfectly summarizes, I guess, um, um, what we what we discussed so far and, and great advice. And thanks for sharing that experience. Now, finally, uh, Ronnie, when you look back on your uh, professional career, at least so far, um, what would you say, and I'm interested to hear that, what would you say was your uh, greatest innovation rock star moment so far? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's hard to pick. Um, mm. um, I've been very fortunate to have quite a few, but I would say maybe the first global innovation summit that we ran in KPMG, which was around uh, June uh, 2021, which was amazing. And uh, we got to people from across the globe and that was probably a rock star moment for me. Yeah, sounds like a rock star moment. If it was physical or virtual stage, doesn't matter, but it was on stage, right? So we can count as, exactly. a, as a rock star oh, moment. Oh yeah, first it was on stage, really, really See? fancy stage, by the way, very fancy yeah. studios and it was remote, but uh, it actually made it even more complicated. <laughs> it, it actually does. Yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree to that. So that is a great rock star moment. Uh, congratulations uh, to that. One of those many moments you had and, and will have for sure. Um, yeah, and that's it for this episode. Um, so thanks so much again for being my guest on this episode. It was really a pleasure um, to listen to you. And thanks for also for sharing your experiences. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And to everybody listening or watching, if you want to learn more about this topic, then simply leave us a comment um, on this episode or just drop us an email at info at innovation rockstars dot show. Now that's it. Thanks for listening. Take care and bye bye. Thank you to our innovation rock star, Roni Michael, on how to drive innovation in the new era of work. Further links to Roni's own podcast, Back From 2040, can be found in the show notes of this episode. If you would like to give us feedback, just shoot us a note at info at innovationrockstars.show. If you like the show, then leave us a rating and recommend it to others. For more inspiring innovation stories, visit our website at www.innovationrockstars.show or browse through our Innovation Rockstars channel on all major podcast platforms.